Welcome back to Oshkosh in Air Venture 2008. Paul Plack here, and we're talking with Charlie Becker, who is with Member Services with EAA. We're here to talk about the occasion of the 30,000th FAA registered home built aircraft in the United States. Charlie, I, in my personal life, these things tend to sneak up on me, these milestones. Who was it who looked up one day from their desk and said, hey, you know what's coming up? Well, actually, that would be me. Um, I get a quarterly report from the FAA, and uh, so I kind of monitor what's going on with the experimental amateur builds and also the light sport aircraft now. So I've been kind of seeing this coming, and about six months ago, I said, hmm, we need to do something. And then it just turned out that it's going to happen right around Air Venture time. So I figured, you know, what better place to have a big party about home builds than Air Venture? Well, now, I, I don't think a lot of people have a, a good perspective of how many home builds there are in the U.S. general aviation fleet. I mean, are we talking 2 percent, 5 percent? What is it? Well, actually, uh, according to the FAA administrator this, uh, this morning, it's 10 percent of the total fleet, and I, I believe it's about 20 percent of the single engine fleet you know, when you eliminate the, the multi-engine commercial aircraft, things of that nature. So it's quite a bit. And, you know, the way I look at this is it's just going to keep growing and growing because I believe we're outpacing most of the manufacturers. Now, there was actually a challenge in identifying the 30,000th home build. I know this is going to come as a shock to a lot of our listeners, but some things that go into the FAA in one end don't come out sequentially in the other end. Uh, that is correct. I, I, when we first talked about this idea. We, we, we called the FAA uh, in Oklahoma City where they keep track of all these records and said, hey, could we figure out who the 30,000th home built is? And they basically told us <laughs> it's virtually impossible. Yeah. So um, that's when we said, well, okay, it's going to happen around Air Venture. So let's just take one of the newly certificated aircraft that fly in, kind of do a drawing out of everybody that registers at Home Builders Headquarters. And uh, that's what we did. Okay, and so I assume people had to submit some sort of entry materials to be eligible for this and to be here physically. Yeah, the big thing was to be here physically. Um, what they had to do is complete their aircraft in 2008, and this is U.S. amateur built aircraft. So clearly we're well over 30,000 worldwide, you know, probably many years ago. I don't have a number on that. Um, so they had to be U.S. registered and they had to fly it here to Air Venture, and then they had to stop by and register their aircraft at Home Builders headquarters. And we needed to wrap it up by Tuesday afternoon. That was the other thing. Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Welcome back. We're here now with Bob Knoll, who was lucky enough to have his Vans RV selected as the 30,000th home build. Uh, Bob, I have to ask you, first of all, tell us a little bit about why you chose a Vans RV and, and tell us a little bit about the airplane. Well, first off, I uh, was familiar with the plane from uh, the local EAA chapter in Yuma, Arizona. A couple of the guys had already built this particular model, and so I had some experience from seeing their, their plane. And How long did it take you to build it? Uh, three years and four months, and started uh, in October of 2004 and finished it on February 1st, 2008. Now, a lot of people want to know this. What kind of aircraft building experience did you have before you tackled this project? Uh, none, <laughs> absolutely none. And matter of fact, uh, the first uh, experience, any kind of a metal experience that I'd had was probably at uh, one of the uh, AA chapters uh, in his garage. He had invited me over and says, "You know, well, you want to try riveting?" And he just took a couple of pieces of scrap uh, aluminum and says, "Well, you drill them together, you do this, you know, and tried it out, and it said, well, this is not that difficult. I think I can do this." EAA local chapters, where they are available to people are a great resource and uh, are, are there a lot of people in your area who have built first-time aircraft uh, with help from the EAA chapter? Um, there's a fair amount. There's not, n not in our area in Yuma, there's not that many because we just don't have the, the number of people down there. Yuma is not a big, big community, but in my experience with our chapter, we've probably had uh, uh, half a dozen planes that have been built in the last five years out of the chapter. Well, that's a terrific success story for the EA chapter. Bob, tell us a little bit about 
your choices in equipment for the plane and your choice of finish because frankly not all RVs come out this nice looking. Well, <laughs> as far as the finish is concerned, uh, um, I wanted to paint the plane myself and my wife said no. <laughs> she said you've spent all this time and money on this, you're going to screw it up. You painted that golf cart out there and it looks like whatever. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> so, but she she asked me just in general terms what I wanted as far as the paint was concerned and I told her and she designed the, the paint uh, scheme on it. What did you choose for engine? I chose a standard uh, Lycoming uh, engine, what I call a knockoff engine, which is built by Aerosport Power, an 0320, uh, carbureted, uh, with dual mags on it. Okay, and, and you have a, uh, a, a fixed prop, so you've got the standard van's recommendation package for this airplane. Absolutely. I didn't want to deviate from that either. I thought that, you know, these, these guys have figured out the engineering on this, and I think that's important to stick with that. Yeah, Vans has a, has a real good track record on that. So where have you flown it, and how does it fly? Well, I've flown it a lot around in Arizona, and this is the first long, big long trip uh, out here with it. And it took us, uh, I think it was uh, 12 and a half hours of air, air time out here. Um, and uh, it flies great. It's a very docile plane to fly. You, you know, you, you put, the, put the stick where you want to go, and the plane goes there, and it doesn't, doesn't deviate from it at all. And, so I, I, just a joy, really. Sunny or cloudy. Rainy or bright. Day or night. The future of flying is now clearly in sight. Garmin SVT. Synthetic Vision Technology. So you're learning to fly in, your dad, in a plane your dad built? Um, yes, I finished my private pilot's license and I'm going to transition into this and then I can fly it and say, Dad, can I have the keys to the plane? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this year they're trying to uh, make it aware to everyone how many uh, women pilots there are. And I got to sign the logbook of how many women pilots. And on Friday morning, they're actually going to take a picture in Aeroshell Square with all the women pilots decked out in pink shirts. All right. Well, it sounds, Bob, for somebody who had uh, no aircraft construction experience uh, coming into this deal, it sounds like you put together a project that's really been an interesting time for your family. Well, it's been very interesting. Uh, you can't do a project like this without having family support. Uh, so. And even at one time or another, we had the wings that are in the living room. <laughs> My wife, she she made me cover them up, so they, with uh, you know plastic to sort of cover them up. But she was very proud actually that she allowed allowed me to do that. Well, I want to thank you both for uh, appearing with us today, and congratulations on your personal achievement first of all, because I know that when it comes down to it, that's a much bigger deal than happening to have the random number assigned to you. But also congratulations on building the 30,000th home built. Oh, thank you very much. With Bob and Katrina Knoll from AirVenture 2008, for Aero News Network and Aero TV, I'm Paul Plack.